can good planets give bad results or can bad planets give good results sometimes this is very frequently asked in comments why this planet is bad will the results be good or will it be bad all right so maybe we have many bad planets all right but they may give good results sometimes if if they harmonize with the energies of the flow of the horoscope the goal the final aim the destination of the horoscope so therefore uh, before you think that a planet is bad or good just ask this is it in line with the final purpose of the horoscope or of your life <laughs> so then <clears throat> that bad thing ultimately becomes good for you and then that good thing sometimes can become the worst thing to happen for you all right so let's discuss some principles in brief actually there's no principle it's very simple actually so for example there are certain planets which are not conducive for married life mm -hmm. which which are those planets the number one destructor is the sixth lord you you might be thinking i'll say oh mars <laughs> Yes, Mars is also there in the hit list. These Mars and the sixth lord. And why is it Mars? Because he's the Karaka for the sixth house. Shani also is the Karaka for the sixth house, but he Shani is misery, suffering in general. You know, it's like Shani doesn't need marriage or career. He is suffering in general. <laughs> so Shani is like for anything you can take him. You know, it's like all ticks, right? Because he shows our karma basically, our sins. But especially if you talk for marriage. And then uh, Mars, let's talk of Mars. If you, if you desire a good married life, if you desire a good married life, then uh, it may not be the best thing to have Mars in very prominent positions. People with Mars in Kendra, 1, 4, 7, 10, always have problems in married life. Why? Because... Uh, Mars is the soldier basically. Mars gives you this uh, because Mars is a tamasic planet, right? So Mars gives you this fake sense of stupidity and uh, aggression and power. So people who have Mars very prominent, or even if Mars is conjunct the moon or the ascendant lord, then also this can happen. So they th they think that you know they are like uh, they are like Hanumanji, right? Now. It's great if you do service for Lord Ram, like Hanuman did. Great, nothing wrong with that. But the problem is in Kali Yuga, they will use it for wrong purposes. So that that Hanuman tendency behaves like Ravan, all right? So they end up ruining their lives. And uh, when you do that, then who is the first person that gets affected? That's your spouse, right? So nine out of 10 times I've seen, if Mars is, in the ascendant or fourth, seventh, and tenth. And I'm not talking of Manglik and all this year, all right? I'm talking of Mars in general, or even with an exalted Mars I've seen. Always difficulties in marriage. <laughs> now, if a person says, I want to remain celibate, I don't want to get married. I want to follow Brahmacharya. And then if Mars is in one, four, seven, ten, or if it is exalted or with the ascendant Lord or with the moon, then this is the best thing you can have. Best. Because then that spirit is there inside you. Okay. You, I mean, not that it is there always, but uh, you can uh, very easily channelize it for celibacy. But if you have a good, strong Mars uh, in the Kendra, may not be a very good placement for married, married life. You know? So now suppose, uh, when does it affect the marriage and when does it not? So if suppose somebody has a very uh, prominent Mars and a person has a very bad Jupiter or a very weak Jupiter. Bad Jupiter means uh, placed in Dustanas, all right? In the Bhav chart, disclaimer. And weak Jupiter means it's uh, either in an enemy sign or you know it's like not supported by the natural friends like Sun, Moon, or Mars. So if Jupiter is very weak, then what can happen is this tendency to punish people, which is shown by Mars, 
cannot be controlled by Jupiter, which is forgiveness. So for long lasting relationships and marriages, the number one quality, which is most important is forgiveness. So do not get married or do not enter into a relationship. If you cannot forgive, if you love to punish people, you will end up punishing yourself because why, what will happen? Uh, you will enter into a relationship or you will get married thinking that, you know, it's like a piece of cake. <laughs> and then later on, you'll think, oh, this person did this mistake. You know, I won't forgive this person. I'll punish this person. I will beat this person mentally. <laughs> or you may beat physically also. And then what happens later on, you only regret, you lament that, oh, why did I do this? I wish I would have not spoken those words or not behave like this. So then a bad Mars may be very good if you want to have a good married life. But now suppose you want, you are not very much interested in marriage. You are only interested in career, money and you know, show off. Then you need a, a very strong Mars because then you can uh, boast about yourself. Have you seen uh, people with uh, Sun and Mars, strong Sun, strong Mars, you know? You cannot sit with them for two minutes. The, the moment you sit, they will start boasting what they did three years back, what they did uh, five years back. So the moment I see all this, you know, like uh, hungry and desperate and uh, so desperate for blind light, they cannot sit a moment peacefully, you have seen. So then how do these people have good relationships? But then they can, you know, uh, they, they might be uh, going towards the career side, you know, oh, I want to do things at big scale, you know, I want to have a million subscribers, you know, I want to have a company with, you know, 500 people or something, you know, 50,000 people, I will manage them or something like this. So, then this uh, good planet can, then, then this planet can be good for the horoscope. Or suppose, you know, you have certain nakshatras which are linked to the sixth house, certain planets which are in the nakshatras of the sixth lord. They, if most of the planets are somehow linked, then again, uh, that means uh, you might be more focused towards money and not very much focused towards marriage. So then if you now have a bad Mars, this will, this will ruin the horoscope. Because then it is like, life is pushing you towards you know going and conquering external things but you are not having the energy and the discipline and the fire to do things and then you are like oh my god i wish i was at home <laughs> then a bad planet can really ruin you then a good mars can be very good but if you have most of the planets which are in the nakshatras uh, ruled by the second lord seventh lord and then if you have a very strong or very prominent Mars, wow, that is like a royal disaster. It's like life is pushing you towards marriage, marriage, family. Mm -hmm. And then you are like blasting on your spouse, you know, family members, your mother, father, husband, wife, children. <laughs> so then, then also you are ruined, all right? And now if a person has primarily uh, these nakshatras, the second, seventh, eleven, and then the person has, you know, some uh some not not very prominent position of mars you know maybe uh, the second house or you know the 11th house the third house fifth house ninth house not prominently acting the person's life okay then great blessing this is or even if mars is debilitated congratulations thumbs up right so then a bad planet is this so-called terrible mars bad mars is very good for you okay because you're not aggressive and that's why you have long sustaining relationships. So this is the situation. Okay. Now this does not mean anybody who does not have Mars in Kendra cannot have a good career. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying depending on the event, it will be decided. What is a planet good for? What is a planet bad for? All right. So another example, let's take uh, for K2, for example. So if a person is like too overly materialistic, too overly materialistic, I'm not saying a normal materialistic person who has a family, a career and a job and earning nice money. I'm not saying about that person. I'm talking of these uh, sinful crooks actually who are, you know, indulging in 
alcohol, you know, eating meat, you know, and doing all this nonsense. So now, if they have Ketu linked with the moon or with Venus, they are smashed. They will have the time of their life. They, they will see living hell in this life. Why? Because even if they're enjoying all these things, uh, crappy things, which is Venus basically, Beyond a certain extent, all right. Uh, especially like uh, instead of staying with one spouse, they are hopping like dogs every night with you know another spouse. There are people who do all this in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is full of such people. Then they have Venus with Ketu. Oh my God! Then it's like you know they are indulging, 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 but they are not happy. Uh -huh. So then they are miserable. Or if this is in the sixth house, wow. Moment you enter a relationship, it breaks, right? So, <clears throat> therefore, that's terrible. So, then this placement can be really bad. But suppose some person who is decent materialistic, which means has a family or is working in uh, some company or has a business and uh, does spiritual practices and has a healthy spiritual life and is inquisitive to go close to God. Then this person has Ketu in, you know, fifth or ninth or link with the Ascendant Lord or the Moon. Then this is the greatest blessing to have. Yes. So now if Ketu is not in a prominent position, then, and because Ketu is internal, so I am, so here I will say Ketu in five and nine is very prominent, but Mars is not an in internal plan. So that is why I said earlier, if Mars is in five, nine, don't, I don't consider it very prominent. But if Ketu is in 5-9, it's very prominent. All right. So this is an example that I give you. All right. You, you want to achieve something. According to that, you judge, is this planet good for me or not? Or, or this bad planet is good or bad for me at the end. All right. So this is how you should judge for every event, for every area of life you need to judge like this. Because one bad, bad or not so nice planet can be good or bad for different areas. So this Mars, which is debilitated or outside of the Kendra, may be good for married life, but this may be very bad in some other areas. Okay. So then this same Mars can, although it is not very good, can act very good for married life, but can trouble you in other areas. All right. And similarly, an exalted planet, like an exalted Jupiter. In, in fact, uh, once I had seen the horoscope of a criminal, he had an exalted Jupiter. And then I had done some research. He always used to say, you know, uh, what was the statement he used to say, you know, hope is my only strength. Why, why, why did he used to say this? Because Jupiter represents hope. Jupiter is the faith, the belief, the hope in God, in, the, in your Guru. So now, because the horoscope is going towards you know, criminal behavior. This exalted Jupiter is giving him, you know, unlimited hope. Can you believe it? Yes, this is what Guru is doing. And if he had a debilitated Jupiter, then he would feel, you know, remorse or you know, regret, something like this. But now if a normal person has debilitated Jupiter, that person may not be interested in spirituality. So the same exalted Jupiter or debilitated Jupiter will behave differently for different people. That is why stop writing useless things like my Jupiter is exalted. Why did I not get good results? Right? Well, did you know how to use it properly? Did, did your astrologer tell you how to use this Jupiter properly? If he or she has not told you, then how do you know where to use it? Right? Or do you know yourself? All right, so the point is every planet will be good for certain areas and may not be good, good for certain areas. Irrespective of the fact it is exalted, debilitated in Mool, Trikon or, you know, Digbal or whatever it is. All right, so now of course the overall chart also matters. As I said in the beginning, all right, because I made these misconception videos and I'm flooded with uh, mails and uh, comments and... Instagram messages and Facebook messages, you know. Oh, you said this planet is there, this will happen. My God, I don't feel like living, you know. Hearing this from a person like you definitely means it's going to happen in my life. I'm doomed, I'm dead, I'm finished actually. Please look at your horoscope. For God's sake, don't go by blind statements. 
I always tell look at your entire horoscope and go to your personal your your personal astrologer who you always go don't keep hopping to 10 astrologers like this otherwise one astrologer will say oh mars in third is good another one will say mars in third is bad all right so mars is mars but how is mars functioning for you is mars in which areas in mar is mars in third house giving you good results in which areas is it giving you bad results so that you cannot understand from a YouTube video or if you go to 10 astrologers, your, your mentor, your coach, your, your personal, your private astrologer can only tell you. You know why? Because that person knows you literally or is supposed to know you actually, your mentor or your guru. So ask your mentor. Don't ask me what will happen. My Mars is in third. I cannot tell you what happens. It can be anything. You may be a great writer. You may be a murderer with Mars in third. Yes, because third house is the hands. Mars is, you know, weapons. <laughs> right. Similarly, it's with Saturn or Rahu or, you know, any planet. Right. So, I can tell you, these are the principles. But what happens that only your mentor can tell you. Right. Who knows you personally. Your astrologer must know you personally. You cannot behave like a robot with astrology. Astrology is not the game of robots. It's a game of humans. <laughs> So be human, be normal. And when you go to astrologers, don't talk like robots. My Mars is in third, what will happen? You tell the astrologer. When it comes to Martian traits, these, these are my advantages, these, these are my challenges. All right. Don't be like robots. You know, tum, 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 Mars in third, tum, Mars in fourth, tum. Have you seen robots? Yeah, there are people who behave like robots, basically. Sometimes I've seen, you know. They don't talk like normal human beings. They'll talk, you know, oh, my Mars is exalted, what will happen? <laughs> Mars is not a planet, it's a part of you, for God's sake. So, talk as a human being, you know, you know what Mars represents. So, talk like a human being. Okay, Mars is this, I behave like this when it comes to Mars, all right. Otherwise, uh, you will get robotic answers. Mars in 10th house, good. Okay, congratulations. And then you got divorced in Mars, the sun, right? Why? Because the 10th house is the worst house for marriage. It's the brother of the 6th house, do not forget, all right. 6th house is? Denial of marriage. So then you will say, oh, astrology doesn't work. Because that planet which was good was terrible for another area of life. And that happens. Sometimes people, you know, their careers go up, marriage goes down. Marriage goes up, career goes down. It happens all the time. So be like humans. Don't be like robots. All right. Don't treat astrology as an impersonal science. It's a, it's a personal science. Okay. That is all I would say. And if you want to watch other videos similar to this topic, I'll put it here. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. And if you're new, then please subscribe. If you like the video, click the thumbs up. And uh, if you want a consultation, you can go to my website below, exoticastrology.in. All right. Thank you very much.